joining us on the Glory TV news update at 4. I am Titulayo Olamide. And you have the reports for the evening. Four killed as bandits attack German local government area of Cardinal State. No fewer than four people have been killed and one person injured as bandits attack Gutka community in German local government area of Cardinal State. According to the Cardinal State Commission for Internal Security and Home Affairs, Samuel Aruma, the armed bandits invaded the community and killed four residents, including two males and two females. The two males, according to the security reports, were attacked and killed on their farm by assailants. A woman also sustained gunshot injuries and was rushed to the hospital while security patrols are ongoing in the general area alongside investigations into the attack. Meanwhile, Governor Nasser El Rufai has expressed sadness over the incident and prayed for the repose of the souls of the disease. This attack comes days after 10 people were killed during an attack and counter-attack at two villages in Giwa local government areas of Cardinal State. The government, according to the state, According to the Cardinal State Commissioner for Internal Security and Home Affairs, Samuel Arua invaded Naiko village in, in Gowa local government and engaged the community volunteers in a gun tour, which led to the death of three residents of the community. Arua explained that in a reaction to the killing, youth of Naiko village attacked a nearby Fulani settlement, Rungan Abdumuninu and killed two persons whom they alleged to be involved in the initial attack. On the, on the security challenges in Kaduna, the state government has private schools operating in high-risk areas to adhere to the security advisory issued to them. This followed reports that some schools have continued to operate outside of the guidelines presented to them by the security agencies for the safety of their students and staff. Plus, economic activities resume in Utsuka after Monday sits at home. Economic activities resumed in Utsuka town of Enugu state on Tuesday after Monday sits at home ordered by the proscribed indigenous people of Riafra IPOB that made people to stay at home on Monday. The news agency of Nigeria NAN reports that streets and roads that were deserted on Monday because of the sit at home order came back to life on Tuesday as roads and streets started witnessing high volume of human and vehicular traffic. Banks, shops, markets, filling stations, motor parks, schools, business centers, offices that shut down on Monday or opened for their normal businesses. Mr. Collins Eze, a business center operator, said he was happy to resume business after the Monday sit at home to commemorate evils killed during the Civil War 51 years ago. Another resident identified as Odioko, however, urged Igbo people, especially the world who wants to also assist the wives and children of the Brian France soldiers who lost their lives during the Civil War. And still on the news, my education road construction plan for Anambra says Orajaka. All Progressive Congress APC aspirants in the forthcoming Anambra governorship election. Paul Orajaka has unveiled his plans to revolutionize education and ensure good road networks in the states. In a statement on Monday, Orajaka noted that education and road construction form part of a six point vision captured in the security, health, electricity, empl employment, education, and road share agenda. The APC governorship front runner disclosed how he engaged a team of world class educationalists and professionals sometime last year to produce a master plan for the state educational system. According to him, last year I engaged a team of professionals to tinker on how best, on how best our educational system can be more encompassing, and the premise of that team is that the forefront of my plan for education is the state. First, education from primary to secondary level must be qualitative and free. Secondly, I will incorporate compulsory vocation study at those two levels of education. Our young boys and girls are very enterprising and so my plan is to engage them in different vocational studies at the earliest stage. Right from primary to secondary school, 
every child would be compelled to learn a skill because we will set up technical school ventures that will be attached to former schools where students can learn technical skills side by side their former education. Again, we will work with large-scale manufacturers and target industries to design a run vocational training program near clusters for technical talent. My plan is that by the time they are ready for tertiary education, they are already well empowered with various skills to engage in a productive life in the society. My attention will also be focused on training, retraining, welfare of teachers and rebuilding the dilapidated educational structure in the state. We will do this by establishing a support our school initiative to draw in private organizations to partner with the state government, school rehabilitation and providing tax incentives for their for such private organizations. Condemning the current deplorable, deplorable state of growth in Anambra State, Roger Khan noted that he would declare a state of emergency on roads on his first day in office and a comprehensive audit of states that the roads will be carried out in the shortest possible time and credible contractors will be engaged immediately. Roger Khan noted that the comprehensive plan of his share agenda which is concealed in a pamphlet will soon be distributed to all ETGs of a number of states to help them make informed decisions come November 6, 2021. Over this, we move to the foreign scene. Uganda minister survives assassination attempt. Government attacked a car carrying Uganda minister of works and transport general Katumba Wamala in, a, in an attempted assassination his daughter and driver. It was gathered that four attackers on motorcycles opened fire at a vehicle carrying the former army commander at the Kampala sub of Kasiasi on Tuesday morning, June 1st. According to reports, the Assalant Trade General Katumba's vehicle with registration number H4 this F2138 before opening fire on them. General Wam General Wamala survived with bullet wounds in his left arm and chest and was rushed to Wakom Clinic and later Nakasero. Unfortunately, his daughter Brenda Natango, Wahala, and driver Aruna Kayundu died on the spot. The former commander was reportedly on his way to attend a vigil for his mother in law at the time of the shooting. Images circulating on social media showed Wamala with his mouth opened in apparent distress beside the car and its eye and its light colored trousers splattered with blood. Images also showed bullet holes in the car window and cases on the ground. Plus, on COVID-19 reports, Peru now what COVID death toll. Peru has more than doubled its COVID death toll following a review making it the country making it the country with the with the world's highest death rate per capita, according to John Oxen University data. The official death toll is now more than 180,000, up from 69,342 in a country of about three of, of in a country of about 33 million people. Prime Minister Violetta Bermudez said the number was increased on the advice of Peruvilla and international experts. This was in line with so-called excess death figures. Excess deaths are a measure of how many more people are dying than would be expected based on the previous years. The news released on Monday came just six days before Peru is set to hold, pre to hold a presidential runoff election between leftist Pedro Castillo and right-wing candidate Keiko Fujimori. Peru has been one of the was its countries in Latin America resulting in an outstretched healthcare system and a lack of oxygen tanks. It has registered 1.9 million infections in total. Some of the reasons for it being so badly it include an absence of fridges in people's own person, many are sold to make frequent trips to markets to shop for food rather than stocking up and overcrowding in homes and public places. And now on entertainment news, actor Blair Underwood and wife Dasari Dacosta split after 27 years of marriage. Actor Blair Underwood and his wife Dasari Dacosta are split after 27 years of marriage. 
the quant the Quantico actor and a spouse who starred the North in 1994 announced they have parted ways and will remain the best of friends and co parent to daughter Barry 22 and Blake 19 and Paris 24. The couple wrote on their Instagram page after a tremendous amount of thoughts, prayer, and work on ourselves individually and collectively, we have come to the conclusion to, uh, to end our marriage. That begun 27 years ago. It has truly been a beautiful journey. Our proudest achievements are our three incredible children, the three souls to which God entrusted us. We continue to be awake and humbled by the blessings of parenting. We have always put their best interests first and we continue to do so. We will continue to be the best of friends and co parents and have the utmost respect for one another as we embark upon this new chapter of our lives separately. We thank you all for your support throughout the years and we humbly ask for privacy and understanding during this new season of change. Ray and Desiree on the wood. And now we move to spot news. Austria United Management, management coaches suspended. Austrian government has suspended the management and coaches of Osho United Football Club of Oshodo over the club's poor performances in the ongoing 2020-2021 Nigerian National League. Vincent Akebami, the senior special assistant to Osho Governor Boyega Oyitola on sports development, disclosed this in a statement on Tuesday in Oshodo. It said the decision was taken on Monday by the top echelons of the state's ministry of sport and youth of youth and sports he added that olola de benga had been appointed the club's sole administrator and who will be in charge for the remaining six nnl matches of the season the governor's aide explained that olola de was the founder of premier of prime football club of Oshodbo, which is now osho united fc he said olola de took the team to the nigerian professional football league and the semi-finals of the FA Cup as the club's general manager. Akinvam said the government was hopeful that the changes it made would bring better fortunes to the club. He however said team coaches and management could still be recalled after the 2020-2021 NL NLL season. Plus, Sunshine fans lament club's poor performances. Fans of Sunshine Club, fans of Sunshine Stars have lamented the club's poor form in the 2020-2021 season of the Nigeria Professional Football League. The Akure Bay side have not won any of the last 17 games. Last their last victory coming against Enugu Rangers January 24th. According to the chairman of the club's supporters club, Felix Oluwa said the club the poor form can be attributed to the non-payment of the salaries of players and officials. Another fan, Ayodeji Olodbonjaye, is hopeful that the Akure Base Club can survive the drop if they win at least five games. And with this, we come to the end of the Gallery TV News update. This are I am Titulayo Olami Day. Don't forget to visit all our social media platforms on Facebook, Instagram, and on website at www.thegallerytv.ng for more news updates. Thanks for watching throughout the lovely evening. In life, you can never be too sure who to trust. This is the story of Mrs. Ungazi. Mrs. Ungazi just wants to use the ATM. Good afternoon, Mama. Uh, let me help you out here, Udra. You don't need to stress yourself. Thank you. But I can handle it myself. The man is just being kind, right? He just wants to help, right? Wrong. All he needs is a good look at the pin. Will he succeed? I 
Do not share your card pin with anyone. Keep your account information private and ensure no one is watching you while you enter your pin. UBA, Africa's global bank.